Okay, students, uh, welcome to exercise 18a, uh, transformation of sinusoidal functions. Okay, so before graphing sinusoidal sum functions, um, you should change them into the form y equals to a sine bx minus c plus d. So if, if you remember transformations, unit transformations, looks very similar. And instead of working with f of x, you're working with the specific function sine x in this case. Okay, um, we're going to go to step by step and uh, hopefully we can make some sense out of this. So, um, example, if you want to sketch the graph y equals 3 sine 2x minus 2 pi over 3 plus 2. As the same thing as when we did in the transformation unit, you should factor any coefficient of x in here. It'll just be a little easier to identify this value of b. So, what we're going to do here is factor out 2 and what we get is y equals to 3 sine 2 times x minus pi over 3 plus 2. All right, so a just quick review of what the graph of sine looks like. All I'm going to do is sketch the graph of sine between 0 and 2 pi. So we would start at 0, right? It would, it would look something like this. goes up and goes down. This would be 2 pi, right? So put that here. That's 2 pi. It crosses the central axis. Oops, at pi, not 2 pi. Right? Uh, so this is pi, and then there would be two values here, 1 pi over 2, and this would be 3 pi over 2. So that's 3 pi over 2, and this is pi over 2. Okay, um, a couple other things to recognize. This is a maximum of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. So let's go look at the values. Let's identify the values of A, B, C, and D, because in these types of transformations, we're going to talk a little bit more about those specific values. So in A, I think it's pretty obvious that the value would be 3. So A would be equal to 3. B would be equal to 2. So that's where that 2 comes from here. That's where you factored out the value of x. Uh, the value of C, so notice it's x minus C. So our C value is positive and is pi over 3. And D is over here. It's plus D, so plus 2. Okay, so these transformations act exactly like they did in the previous unit. So if you think about it, A, this value of A, this would be a vertical stretch or compression. B, this would be a horizontal stretch or compression. C is a translation from left to right. And D is a movement up or down by value of D. So it's the same idea. So transformations, the vertical shift displacement. So what would happen to our graph here? So we're going to keep the same graph. Um, I'm going to put some intervals so that way we can be a little bit more specific. That's pi over 2, that's pi, uh, that's 3 pi over 2, and that's 2 pi, so I'm going to stretch it out a bit just to have a bit more space. So all we're going to do here with this value of d, we call this often the central axis, because instead of our axis being here, we're going to move everything up 2. So we're going to go up 1, 2, 3. So that means our sine graph would start at 2, the maximum would be at 3 over here. It would come back to 2, go down to 1, and back to 2. And so our sine graph would move up 2. So often we call this the central axis because this is the central line of the graph when our graph goes up above and below. All right. Okay, so now the value of A the amplitude, so that's often associated with the amplitude. Um, in our case, the amplitude was um, 3. So all it does is it, it stretches it by a factor of 3. So I'm going to redraw our graph, but notice that our maximum, right, was usually a 1 above the line. Now it'll be 3 above the line. So if we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... So we had 5 here. Don't forget our central axis was 2, right? So I'll just draw a little imaginary line here. So our amplitude now, instead of going above the line and below the line by 1, you're going to go above the line by 3 and below the line by 3. So again, I'm going to put my units here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is pi over 2. This is pi. 3 pi over 2. And 2 pi. So our graph goes, starts here, right? It's going to go about 3 above, come back, 3 below, so I need another line here to go with minus 1, 3 below at 
3 pi over 2, and back to our starting line. So our graph now, because of the amplitude change, whoops, I missed that point. I think I should uh, redraw that, eh? Let's try that again. Okay, so go here, go down, and up. Okay, so that amplitude here is described by that this value of 3. So that's the 3 here. And you would have another 3 right here. So that's a distance of 3. So any, any value of A that's given in the graph um, that will affect the amplitude. That's the 3 here. Okay, the phase shift. The phase shift, remember, if just to rewrite it, the, the C was pi over 3. Okay, so just like we did in the previous uh, transformation uh, unit, you would move pi over 3 to the right. Okay, so everything's moved pi over 3 to the right. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit harder to sketch because now our points are all off. Okay, so let's go, I'm going to put my original pi over 2, pi, oops, nothing over pi, uh, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so now all that would happen is this is broken up into three paces. So this is pi over 6, pi over 3. So think about it, 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. Right, so you'd have this graph. You could break them all apart like this. Okay, so all would happen is with the phase shift of pi over 3, so again, our central axis would be 2, right? Our central axis would be this 2 line here, and our amplitude would be 3, so you know your maximum needs to go up here somewhere, and you know your minimum must go down to negative 1, so I'm just going to put a dotted line to show where a minimum should be. And all we do is, instead of starting on the y-axis here at, at the, at the, on the central axis, you got to start at pi over 3. So we move it pi over 3. If you remember, the pi, we had a maximum at pi over 2. It's got to move over pi over 3. We had a point on the central axis at pi. It's got to move pi over 3. We had the point, the minimum at 3 pi over 2. Now it's got to move pi over 3 to the right. And the last point, we had our central axis point at 2 pi. That moves over pi to the three, over three as well, and that's what the phase shift would look like. Okay, so that's just one period. Again, this graph would continue this way and that way, right, and continue re repeating itself. Uh, and the last value that we need to find is, uh, or need to deal with, is b equals two. So this basically is used to find the period. It, you can use it as a as a horizontal shift if you'd like. Us the usual period is 2 pi. So the period is normally 2 pi, right? And if your value of b is 1, then the period is 2 pi. But what this value is going to do is that you're going to divide by 2. So this value here of b will divide the period by 2. And what you get is the period becomes pi. So all you're doing is you're compressing, right? So instead of having a period of 2 pi, the full period will happen within pi. So final graph. All right, so do this one last time. So one, two, three, four, five. So go down one. So again, our central axis is two. That was our D value, right? I'm gonna put that right here. D is equal to two, so we went up two. And now we have a maximum at five, right, up here. And then we have a minimum at negative one. Okay, so that's a five. So that becomes, that means the amplitude is 3, right? The amplitude here is 3. Okay, we have a phase shift, so we have to put our scale here, so this is pi over 2, we have pi, we have 3 pi over 2, we have 2 pi, okay, and I'm going to go to 5 pi over 2 just to make sure we complete, and we're going to break that, this up into thirds, because don't forget we moved over pi over 3. So I moved, the, break that up into thirds. <clears throat> so that means our starting point will be at pi over 3. So this is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, okay? And we know our, know our period, our complete period is pi. So 
From this point, a full period would be pi. So if I added pi to this point, it'd be add pi over 2, I'm here. Add another pi over 2, I'm over here. So here would be a complete period on that, uh, on that uh, interval. So now the middle point between that, right, the middle point between that would be right here. That, our graph is going to cross there. We're going to complete a complete period from here to there. So we have to find our maximum. And our maximum will be exactly halfway in between those two points. So right about here. And minimum will be halfway in between the next two points, which is right there. And this is one complete period of our, um, of our graph. Notice we could do another one. We would have another one right here, another one right here. And our graph would go maximum in between. And then again, minimum right there in between and come up. So our graph would continue to do this, right, till infinity. Alright, so that's the five main points what we're talking about here. The last step is to plot the five main points. So for a sine graph, you would start on the central axis, you get a maximum, you go back to the central axis, you go to the minimum, and you go back to the central axis. Every part of the graph is the exact same length, let's say. So that length is the same as this length, which is the same as that length, which is the same as that length. All right, in this next example, um, we're going to try to put it all together. Instead of sketching a graph one by one, I think I'm going to put all the information together. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's go with the value of A. Notice the value of A is 3. Okay, so that means the amplitude is 3. We're going to deal with the negative part in a second. But, so that means the amplitude... equals to 3. Okay, um, let's look at our, our uh, d value. Our d value is negative 2. So d is equal to negative 2. So we'll call it the central axis. So that's the, the line that we're going to go above and below. So the central axis is y equals to negative 2. Because we went down 2. Okay, um, next thing we're going to look at the period. So normally the period is 2 pi, but for the horizontal compression or stretch, you divide by pi over 2. So you divide by that value of b here. So this value that you divided by, that's your b. So our b is pi over 2. So you take your 2 pi, you divide it by 2, uh, sorry, pi over 2. So this would be the same thing as saying 2 pi divided by pi over 2 which would be the same thing as saying 2 pi times 2 over pi. So you switch the fraction around, right? And you get 4. Okay, so the period is 4. So notice that in this case, if our period is 4, it's not in terms of pi, it's in terms of whole numbers. So we know a full period will have 4 units. And that's what we're going to use for, for our axis over here. We're going to put this in integers instead of putting it into terms of pi. All right, and the last thing, we got c is equal to 1, which means that we move 1 to the right. All right, that's a translation. Okay, so let's try to put this on our graph. Okay, so our central axis is negative 2. So we got to put that line on our graph, 1, 2. That is our central axis. I will draw a dotted line to represent my central axis. Okay, I'm going to put negative 2 right here. That's the value. Our amplitude, our amplitude is 3, which means that on each side of my central axis, I should go down 3 and up 3. 1, 2, 3. So that's going to be our maximum. is going to be this value over here. And our minimum will be negative 5 over here. Okay, so this is y equals 1, and this is y equals 2, negative 5. Okay, so um, again, talking about value of our period and period is 4, I know that our period needs to be measured in units because if it's 4, it's not 4 pi. Be careful. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is negative 1, negative 2. That should be enough. Okay, and our graph normally starts from the central axis, goes up, goes to the central axis, goes down, back to the central axis. That's a sine graph, right? But don't forget, we're moving one to the right. So technically, 
I would move that point here, right? And the period is 4. So from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, I need to have my final point. The whole period needs to be contained within this, uh, this area. All right, I've got one last thing to add, and that's going back to the beginning. We had a value of negative 3. Well, the graph is the negative value of sine, and if you guys remember what that negative represents, that's a reflection over the x-axis. So instead of going up and down, our new graph is going to go down and then up. So our graph will have a minimum right away and then a maximum later on. And that's our final graph. It's going to go down and then up. And that is one full period of the graph. Notice I could sketch another one if I went backwards. So if I go back all the way back to negative 5, because I would need to go back to negative 5 because I need one full period, and a full period takes four units. So I would go back to the central axis, back to the central axis. This one would go up because we're going backwards first. So up and then down, and there's another unit. And we could go to the other way too, but I think we're just going to run out of space. So here's a good representation of what one full period would look like.